Hi, I'm Jeff Yager. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics. And I'm Vladimir Mujica. I'm a professor of chemistry at School of Molecular Sciences. So, Vladi, we're making this video today, uh, again, looking at some discussion questions out of Atkins' uh, edition to physical chemistry and the life sciences. And specifically, we're going to look um, at chapter six, which is where he starts a uh, there are three chapters in a row that really go through kinetics, kind of the basics of, uh, of kinetics, chemo, you know, then some kind of some advanced kinetics, and then more specific to biochemistry, which most people just say enzyme kinetics. Um, and so it's starting, you know, back at things that are usually that were introduced to kind of, um, you know, uh, introductory undergraduate level chemistry. Um, and discussion 6.4 specifically asks, distinguish between zeroth, first, second order, and then pseudo uh, first order type reactions. And so um, specifically you've grabbed, uh, you know, what I would say is a pretty common table that you would find um, in most uh, physical chemistry textbooks or even most, um, uh, you know, introductory chemistry textbooks that kind of, you know, point us in the direction to kind of answer this question, which is, you know, looking at uh, what we mean by zero uh, order, yeah. um, you know, zero order, um, where you, in a sense, don't even have to show that, whether it's where we're not explicitly showing that that is a one there, first order, that that's a two for second order, right. um, you know, et cetera. But, right? you know, Jeff, be before we go into the all the details of this. I think there is a very important distinction that we, we need to make at this point. When we look at the chemical reaction, we have to be absolutely clear about the difference between an elementary chemical reaction and an overall chemical reaction. Yes, yeah. Because the elementary chemical reaction is a one-step reaction. So the, all this down here for an elementary reaction applies to that particular step. An elementary reaction can be first order, second order, third order, but it cannot be a fractional order. Right, right. Whereas an overall reaction- Can. It can be, it's, it's, it's no problem, it can be fractional. The elementary cannot be because you are counting an integer number of participants. So it's just one step. So this difference between an overall reaction and an elementary reaction, this is a one-step mechanism. So now we have the other important concept, the reaction mechanism. And the overall reaction, it might be several steps. And this very often is confused. I mean, you can take very similar reaction. Let's say H2 plus Cl2 to give HCl, and H2 plus bromine 2 to give 2HBr. Both of them look exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. And the mechanism is completely yeah. different. So I just wanted to point that out because this well, is something that is very yeah. often overlooked. look. Yeah, and, and I think as a practical point, usually what they'll do is, you know, it'll have some overall uh, reaction rate and they'll usually do like an, you know, A to the N and then, you know, like a, a B to the M and they'll keep going that way and it'll be the combination of all of these that would be the overall reaction that you might be looking at that might have multiple reactants and products. Um, et cetera, involved. And, and so it, it would be, um, you know, the overall reaction would be uh, summing up all of those. Um, yeah. So, but like you said, what we're typically, you know, first addressing here is a lot of the elementary um, processes that are going on and then trying to, through, like you said, trying to get an understanding, you know, uh, of, you know, what are the molecular mechanisms you know, causing, you know, um, this reaction, et cetera. So, um, and I think what you're showing here is, is just when you take this kind of elementary step that you can, you know, look at it, you know, whether it's in this case, first order, whether you start looking at zero third order, first order, you know, second order, you can sit there and look what the overall rate laws are for this. Um, right. And, um you know, step by step, you start with the, this would be the differential rate law. Yeah. And, that's and this the... would be the integrated rate law. And of course, you go from a differential expression that gives you the, the rate. 
And then you go all the way to this integrated thing that gives you the concentration as a function of time. Yeah. And in, in and doing then, this... And this one you're showing specifically for first order, but for most texts, and I, I want to say Atkins does as well, they'll show it for zeroth order, which right. is a, a tri right. more trivial. You've shown it here for first order. You can Students can do this for second order right. themselves, et cetera. So they can solve this differential themselves to kind of show what it is for these uh, common right. elementary right. reactions. Whenever you can do this, of course, for a, for a complex chemical reaction, this is very hard to do. Because if, you, if I give you a mechanism with a number of steps, then the way you, you we are not going to do it here, but, but then you need to consider each elementary step and combine all that so that when you try to integrate that, it becomes a way more complex mathematical problem. But you know, the, the beauty of this is that the concept is exactly the same. It's uh, the math mathematical complexity might differ, but the concept is exactly the same. And one, and you know, it's just it's a very small detail here. You know, this usually is a bad practice to use the same symbol here as in here. I yeah. should have written a prime here, but I didn't want to do it because it will complicate it. But be advised that when, when you are going to do integrations, you want to write it like this. So different symbol here as in there, but this is just a minor thing. Right, right. Mathema and, mathematical nuance. Well, and I, you know, I think one of the things that comes out of students doing this, you've shown it here for first order, you know, do it to, for zeroth order, second order, and, and you know, a lot of what they're going to see initially are going to fall into one of those. You know, zeroth isn't very common to see, but first order is very, very common. E even second order uh, isn't that uncommon to see. And the interesting thing here is when they do this, they're going to find that you get a lot of different, you know, the mathematics that comes out of it is significantly different as you would expect for, you know, changing, you know, uh, an integration as you, you know, change the order of that. Right. Um, so, uh, but oftentimes when you just look at how these concentrations change with time, it can be really hard to see that. They all look like they just, you know, change really rapidly, right? Right. Um, and so, and, you know, this is, you know, a good example of one where you're, you're plotting, in a sense, a normalized concentration over time. And whether you, you look at it, you know, for this first order uh, one, or you look at it, you know, for the second order one, it's hard to really, you know, just look yeah, at those plots right. and see any difference, you know. Uh, they, look, they look like two cats, <laughs> perhaps. Brown cat and a, and, a, and a black cat, but th th they both look like cats, and it's very hard. You see, this is the how why representing data in a different way is so important in science. I mean, if you look at as you said, these two right. plots, but you know, the, the naked the, eye, they look like and the why same you've, creature. You've shown it right here. You know, you've given the indication here earlier where you've shown the integrated. You showed this one. Uh, we didn't work it for. Uh, two or zero, but you can easily tell. I mean, there's there's you know big differences in how you see things here between zeroth order and first order, and this gives us some indication of how we could plot these differently than just the concentration versus time to maybe you know get a handle over which you know order these are from um, you know from how. Uh, uh, you're able to look at them. One being first order is uh, changes logarithmically. Right, and this you see here, because now before it was just the concentration, now is the log of the concentration, and now the log of the concentration. If we remember, it, it was was the, the the log of a naught minus k t, and this is exactly. What is reflected here? This is a linear dependence between the log and time. And this now in this representation, log linear, we see the difference between that and the second order reaction, where now is the one divided by the concentration, the variable versus time. And now it is linear with a linear slope. And you can actually prove coming from here. Coming from here and from here, just work 
work out a little bit the mathematics, and then you will realize that indeed, one over a plot as a function of t and a plot as a function of t give you very different plots, yeah. even though, as, I, as we said before, to the naked eye, concentration versus time for, for both cases, first order and second order, they gave you these two blue cats. Right. And, and, and. Well, and as, as you pointed out here, and I think it's worth, like, this is true of almost anything, right? Like almost, you know, anything that they're plotting as a function of some variable, this time it's time, but you know, whether you're plotting as a function of, you know, concentration, time, temperature, you know, et cetera, you can almost find a way to linearize you know, any equation where ultimately what you're fitting is a line. Um, and so, you know, this one is is uh, particularly easy, but, you know, I just reminding people that, you know, I always write it like this, people, uh, but, you know, uh, to do linear fitting, you know, is something that every spreadsheet or every, uh, you know, any type of plotting program allows. And so this is gonna directly, you know, give us something about LN of, a naught, you know, the normalization, and, you know, the slope here is gonna be, you know, directly uh, related to K in this uh, 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 thing. So, you know, and this is often practically how, you know, rate constants are determined. You right. watch something, you know, you measure something as a function, you watch some concentration as a function of time, normalized to where it started at. And, but instead of trying to fit this directly, you take that data that you get, you put it in the LN of that, uh, in this case, it's, it's pressure, but I mean, that's the same, it's proportional to its concentration um, as a function of time. And then you, uh, if it's linear, you can do a linear fit and determine what that first order rate constant is. Absolutely, and the, the other thing that is probably worth mentioning since we have been talking so much about equilibrium, is that here we are looking at this other aspect. This is the kinetics. So here, time is involved. Right. In equilibrium, the description time of equilibrium, not. time yeah. disappears. Because equilibrium is what happens when you wait for long enough time so that things that were supposed to happen in a time scale happen. How long? Yeah. It depends well, on can, the kinetics. Exactly. And, and in fact, it's almost in this initial plot is when you see it. It's, you know, it's when time now, it's, it's when you get to this exponential tail where, you know, as a function of time, nothing is changing exactly. anymore. Exactly. So, so this, is a, this is a very nice point. As time goes to infinity, you might say, not really. Right. Large compared to the time scale of these things. And so equilibrium, is somewhere here, if you wish. So these concentrations as a function of time eventually tend to their equilibrium value. But the, the, the problem is that in these plots, it's hard to see that because you really need to go to times where these concentrations do not change with time anymore. Right. And there you can identify. So, so, so there is a very deep connection between these two ways of looking at things. Well, and it's, it's probably also worth mentioning if this is going back to our original A going to some products, you know, this often will get looked at as, you know, products over product zero time where you're watching some, you know, build up, you know, instead of some decline. Exactly. You know? Because yeah. you are looking either at the reactant or as the product. This you are looking at the reactant. Here you are looking at the product. So in a way, these two plots, not in a way, these two plots, plots you, get, you get from one to the other. And the other thing that is important is that if you, if you want to look at equilibrium, just say, so how do I get from here, let's say the equilibrium constant. Oh, so now you have to look at the two processes. You have to look A going to P and P coming to A. Right. So this would be the direct rate constant and this would be the inverse rate constant. And it's very easy to prove that the equilibrium constant is going to be the ratio of these two. So, so the, the, there is an extremely deep connection. In this particular case, it's very simple. For a much complicated case, for a more complicated case, the connection is not going to be that simple. But it, it is, you know, the, again, the concept is the same. The mathematical realization might be different. So again, mathematics is not it's not a, a hurdle, it's not an obstacle. 
is something that actually helps us to understand all this, because otherwise you measure, and then what are you going to do with this data? Right, yeah, exactly. And so, and this is, you know, practically, you know, what is done, you know, they first look at, does it, you know, is it changing, is the concentration changing as a function of time, which will give you some idea if it's beyond zeroth order, right? Um, and, you know, if so, then you can look at it in these different ways. Well, if it's changing first order wise, well, then the LN should be linear. If it's changing second order wise, it should go as the inverse of a concentration. Um, you know, should end up giving, you know, a linear relationship, you know, et cetera. And so they can take this data where they're literally measuring concentrations as a function of time and getting something about the reaction mm -hmm. important out of it. And then from this initial rate law, like you said, to move on to where, we're, where they're going with this further is to start looking at these you know, whether it's transition state theory or et cetera, looking at the molecular mechanisms that can cause uh, some of these elementary reactions. So, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>